Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome back to my latest video in my YouTube series on Power Automate for Beginners. So it's all about the basics here with Power Automate. Now in this video, I'm gonna solely focus on different controls you have inside of your flows at Power Automate. And the two major aspects of the controls that we have with our flows are conditions and switches. Now there are a couple other options that you can get in once you get a little bit more advanced with your flows, but basic controls like a condition and a switch allow you to really leverage the ability to um, evaluate any type of situation and then from that evaluation have different offsets of your flow occur from that point forward. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into PowerAutomate.com and take a look at these two control types and see how we can implement them in our flows right away. So here at PowerAutomate.com, what you'll notice is we are simply having just a basic structure of a flow. Now the flow that I'm gonna build here is all based on a condition. Now what a condition allows us to do is provide if then else logic. Now for this if then else logic, you can make it either pretty basic or as complex as you may want depending upon the conditions you create in order to have this flow kick off to be able to evaluate some type of, of item, some type of option in order to see what else happens next. Now the basis of this flow and this condition is we wanna send some emails out. And the emails we send out, we want to be ver varied based upon the condition that we create. And now the condition we're using here for, is based on this SharePoint list. And if you can see here, we have our SharePoint list, some Power Automate accounts. We have some sales leads that are available to our salesmen here at Pragmatic Works. And what we have is we are gonna base our condition on the amount of employees that exist in the company that we are working with. So we are gonna say, if the number of employees are greater than say 500, we're gonna call this an enterprise company, a large business that we have to make sure we have different types of dealings with. But if the employee number for our company is less than 500, we're gonna say this is a small business that we want to handle in maybe a couple different ways. We wanna have different promotions for. So we wanna be able to kick off emails to our salespeople depending upon the size of the company that we're working with so they know how to handle those, uh, those, those leads to be able to go ahead and make that sale for us. So we have our very first flow here. Okay, our control flow here with our condition, and it kicks off, the trigger here is an event trigger when an item is created in that SharePoint list. So anytime an item is added, we are gonna kick off this flow. Now the condition that I've created for this flow, again, is based on the employees from that SharePoint list. We've added in some dynamic content here to pull from the SharePoint list, specifically the employees column on the SharePoint list, and we add it is an is greater than condition. And we said is greater than 500. So whatever that value is, if it's greater than 500, then we are gonna go down the yes path. So if it's greater than 500, if that condition is met to yes, we are then gonna send an email out to our salesperson. Now I've, I've embedded some dynamic content into this send an email step here that allows us to make this a little bit more personable so that salesperson knows exactly what they're getting themselves into. But we have it to the salesperson that is listed there. We have our subject, you have a new enterprise lead and it provides them the account name of the enterprise lead. And then just a very simple body of the email, you've been assigned a new enterprise lead. You can find that lead here. And we've added in, again, a little bit more of our dynamic content. In this case, our link to item dynamic content. Okay, link to the exact item inside of that SharePoint list, that row essentially that we've just created, that is the item on that list. And then because we have a condition here, every condition provides us two options, a yes or a no. If this condition is met, if it is true, then go down the yes path. If it's not true, go down the no path. So in this case, if 
the employee number is not greater than 500, if it's false, we then send this other email. Okay, again, we're sending to our salesperson. Okay, but in this case, we've added just a little bit of a different message. So we have a new small business lead, same idea structure-wise with our account name. Okay, you've been assigned the new small business lead. You can find the lead here. And then we also have our link to item. It looks like that it got added twice for some reason there with our dynamic content. So we can add even more dynamic content in there if we want to. We can add in the account name. We can put in some contact email if we so choose. There's a lot of other information that we can add in all from that SharePoint list that we got from our trigger here. Now, if you've seen, if you're, uh, seen any of my previous videos, you've also noticed that we have some ability here within our triggers, right? We're pulling information from that trigger to be able to add in as dynamic content. Take a look up on my previous video on triggers inside of Power Automate to learn about the different types of triggers that are available to you and how you can use those triggers to kick off your flow. But in this case, we have everything all set. If we were to test this out, all we would need to do is create a new item on that SharePoint list in order to see if we have either greater than or less than 500 uh, employees. So we can go ahead and choose to test it just by simply selecting test here. I'm gonna choose a manual test here in this case. Go ahead and test it. And we're gonna do this by adding in a new item here into our SharePoint list. So we're gonna go ahead and say our account name here. We'll just come up with, you know what? In this case, we'll use Pragmatic Works, my job here. Our classification, we are, I guess we can call ourselves a, oh, we're actually a training company, okay? Our number of employees, we have about, I would say less than 40 employees we'll put in there. Main contact, we'll put in Brian Knight, our CEO. Our contact email, we'll put in Brian at, this is not his real email address, but I'm gonna go ahead and use that anyway. Our state, we are located in Florida. Salesperson email, I'm gonna put myself here so I'm the one that gets the email. And if we wanted to add any attachments, we could. So I'm gonna go ahead and select save. And now if I go back to my flow, you can see that it's now being run and I should be getting an email shortly of information from that flow. It's run successfully and I'm waiting for my email and here it is. Here I go, here is my email. You've been assigned a new small business lead. You can find it here, there it is. And there's my, my lead, my some of my dynamic content, gives me my link to item. All right, so we'll then take a look at our very next flow here, our very next section here within our conditions, our controls is our switch. Now for the switch here, this is another way for us to be able to control how the flow is being initiated. Now the major difference between a condition and a switch is that a condition, as you saw prior, is providing us two options, either a yes or a no, if it met it or it did not. A switch, however, provide, allows us to provide multiple options. In this case, we are gonna have our switch run the exact same format as our condition, pulling from a, a SharePoint list, the same SharePoint list, in fact, but in this case, you'll notice that I've built our switch, again, based on that list to be able to pull from specific items. Now, the control that I have here is not on the business size, but specifically on the business name. So when you use a switch, you need to decide how you want the switch to occur. Which item do you want to be used for the switch? So I chose this on the account name that is input into that SharePoint list. And then you can select specific cases that you are gonna use for the flow. Each case represents a separate execution of this path. Now, part of this is only one execution path is gonna go at a time. So it's gonna look for this account name and then find through our cases if it meets either Microsoft or Google or YouTube and if it doesn't meet any of those cases, we will always have a default case here at the end. If no case contains a matching value, this is our else statement. If you wanna think of it in your condition terms, it's if the account name is equal to Microsoft, then it goes here, or Google, it'll go down case two, or YouTube for case three. 
If else, this doesn't meet any of those, else go ahead and default to this last value, this ending item over here. So as you'll notice here with our cases, we will look for an exact match, otherwise switch to the next option. And it continues through that case here until it finds the option it needs to go ahead and, and work with. So in this first one, we have a, our first case here, we have our case equals to Microsoft. So if we have a new sales lead with Microsoft, specifically as our account name, we're gonna go ahead and send out this email. Again, to our salesperson, you have a new Microsoft sales lead, you've been assigned a new Microsoft sales lead, you can find the lead here, having them make contact. And I have, generally, all I've done was a simple copy to my clipboard and paste in these steps into all these other areas here to make this nice and simple for me to use over and over. So I have for Microsoft, I've then changed it to say Google. I've also changed it to say YouTube. And finally, in our else condition, just a small business lead. Right? You've assigned a new small business lead, you can find it here. Okay? These are our largest uh, companies we work with, so we wanna make a more specific item so our salespeople know exactly where to go from there. And what you'll also notice right here at the end, just an additional feature, what I've done was I've edited out or renamed the specific send and email steps here within each case. Now I've done that because it just makes our naming conventions much easier in the future. I can remember to come back to this or exactly what happens here if I were to copy and paste this. If you're ever interested in renaming at any step here in Power Automate, just select these ellipses here on the side and you can choose to rename it right there. Pretty simple for us to do. So we have all of our different switches here or cases here within our switch to be able to leverage as we go ahead and create this flow. So again, the last item that we need to do, we just need to test it. And we're gonna choose a manual test. Go ahead and select test again. And all we need to do now is start adding in some more items into our SharePoint list. So I'm gonna add in one item here, our new point here. We're gonna say our account name this time will be, let's choose the Microsoft one. Our classification, we'll call it Microsoft a tech company. We'll say they have probably a lot of employees, so we'll go with 100,000 employees. I'm not quite sure if it is true or not. We'll say we're gonna have our main contact with Bill Gates, and we'll say his email, just do Bill Gates at Microsoft.com in Washington. Salesperson email. I'm going to put myself again. And select save. So I should be getting, now as my flow is running, I should be getting an email specific to Microsoft. So let's go ahead and I'm going to check my email over here and see if it comes on in. And there it is. I've been signed a new Microsoft sales lead. You can find the lead here. There's our link to item. Everything's all set up for us. Nice there. We can do one more test. I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna edit, me do another manual test. We're gonna try one more. And in this case, because we have our cases here, we can go ahead and choose any other value and hopefully it'll go to that default setting, that default casing. So we'll choose, um, Tom's trucks, classification auto, number of employees, we'll say 50, main contact, Tom at tt.com, his email, oh, we'll put that in his email. There we go, we'll say Tom Thomas. And we'll say they are in Georgia. Salesperson email, put myself again because I want to have that val validation there. And select save. So I should get one more email here and let's see what we get. We should get, uh, actually check our flow. It is running, it's going through the different cases. It's now been accomplished here. As you see, it's, as it's the switch has been accomplished right there. It's run through all those items. We should now be getting our email 
coming in to be able to see that we have our small business lead. And there it is for Tom Strucks. We have been assigned a new small business lead. We can find the lead here. So as you start to build out your flows here with Power Automate, think about all the different thing, items that you can add in to make it work more specific to your personal needs. Instead of creating multiple flows that are doing the same thing from one list or from one area, you can start to add in controls into your flows to be able to kick off separate items downstream from that flow itself, either using a condition which provides us two options, a yes or a no. Did I meet that condition or did I not meet that condition? Using some of that if then else statement. Now, if you don't want to go down just that simple condition route, what you can do is open up a switch control. And inside of a switch, you can directly declare the item that you want to use for that switch to occur within our cases. And you can have as many cases as you want. And just remember, as you work through the flow and as those uh, cases are now being iterated over, there's always going to be a default, an else statement, if you will, inside of your casing. So if it doesn't match any of those specific items, it's going to default to some other option inside of the flow itself. Well, thanks for hanging out with me again today. I appreciate all of the great comments that everybody's dropping into these videos. Please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff here with us here at Pragmatic Works Training. We absolutely appreciate all the feedback that everyone has been giving us thus far. Stay tuned for our next video as part of the series as we start to look at all of the basic options here you have within Power Automate. Bye now.